This is the story of Chilika, a 1,000 square kilometer lake on the east coast of India. Because of its connection with the Bay of Bengal, Chilika is also a lagoon. And like all coastal lagoons, its waters are rich with life. In the late 1990s, Chilika was a weed-infested, dying lake. But thanks to ecological restoration by the Odisha government, it's once again a steady source of livelihood for thousands and a vibrant refuge for wildlife. For threatened wetlands everywhere, Chilika's resurrection is a story of hope. Chilika is one of Asia's most important wintering grounds for migratory birds, and greater flamingos are among the earliest visitors every winter. They are believed to come here mainly from the Kutch region of Western India, where they breed. For them, the journey to Chilika is perhaps not such a difficult one. Other migrants are known to travel thousands of kilometers to get here. Many come from as far away as Europe and Central Asia. Chilika's waters abound with food, and for these Eurasian widgeons, it's time to replenish their reserves after a long journey. Not all of Chilika's birds are migrants. Some are permanent residents, like the little cormorants. When these expert fishermen gather to hunt, others follow, hoping for a stray morsel. A gull will even pretend to be a cormorant for a piece of the action. Many species of birds can feed simultaneously in the lake, thanks to different diets. The shape and size of their beaks and legs allows them to exploit different resources. The secret of Chilika's biodiversity lies in its mix of salt water from the sea and fresh water from rivers and streams. This fresh water to salt water gradient creates ideal conditions for life. Every high tide brings rich nutrients from the sea into the lake. At low tide, the exposed mudflats attract hungry plowers and sandpipers. For crabs, the mudflats are not just home, but also an important source of food. Hidden in the substrate are microscopic organisms, which the crabs extract with astonishing efficiency. The crabs must hurry for in a few hours, the tide will be back.
Seawater is Chilica's lifeblood. Without a regular inflow, the lake could die. In fact, from the 1970s to the 90s, Chilica went into a decline when its sea inlets became so choked with silt that seawater was reduced to a trickle. At the same time, inflows from streams and rivers began changing the lake's character from brackish to fresh. Invasive freshwater weeds spread rapidly, soon covering a third of the lake. With the water spread shrinking every year, fishing activity and fish catch plummeted. Chilica became known as a dying lake. Scientists studying ways to restore the lake's health decided that urgent action was needed. So in September 2000, after rigorous modeling studies, a new mouth was dredged open between the lake and the Bay of Bengal. With seawater flowing in and out again, there was a positive transformation. As the lake's salinity levels increased, freshwater weeds retreated and open water was restored. Fish populations recovered and catches went up significantly. Today, Chilica is a reliable source of livelihood for over 200,000 people. The fisher folk of Chilica have devised dozens of different methods to catch the lake's fish, prawns and crabs. Apart from the active fishing that people do, passive fish traps are at work 24 hours a day. The intensive fishing by humans makes life difficult for one of Chilica's top predators the white-bellied sea eagle. With its seven-foot wingspan and keen eyesight, the eagle is a master hunter. It's a case of so near, yet so far. The eagle cannot risk getting tangled in the net. It must look elsewhere for a meal. One fish eater that has learned to take advantage of the nets lives underwater, the Arawadi dolphin. These beakless dolphins are more closely related to killer whales than to other dolphins. Chilica is home to about 150 of these highly endangered mammals. This species employs a unique spitting behavior while hunting. The intelligent animals have learned that by chasing fish towards the nets, they can catch them easily. Fish that escape often end up in the traps, benefiting its owner. Inevitably, Chilica's dolphins have become a major tourist attraction. Posters put up by tour operators misleadingly depict performing aquarium dolphins, attracting large numbers of visitors. In truth, Chilica's dolphins are extremely shy, and all you see of them most of the time 
is just a dorsal fin or a tail fluke. Dolphin tourism was initially meant to provide an alternative livelihood to people from just one fishing village that was affected by the opening of the sea mouth. But thanks to its immense popularity, the business has expanded to several hundred boats from many fishing villages. And sadly, most operators show little concern towards these sensitive animals. During the holidays, dolphin frenzy is at its worst. While the noise from the diesel engines is horrendous, the sharp propellers pose a serious danger. Like hungry predators, the boats pursue the gentle dolphins relentlessly. A different model of tourism in the marshes of northern Chilica offers a true example of ecotourism. Here, reformed bird hunters guide small groups of tourists quietly through a watery wonderland. These marshes are extremely important feeding grounds for thousands of birds. Flocks of black-tailed godwits also use the marshes for resting, until roused by a marsh. Wetlands are among the most productive habitats on Earth, and Chilica is no exception. Among the many attractive birds in the marshes, the most eye-catching are the purple swamp hens. They are social birds, but when it comes to food, they can be quite pushy. The birds compete for the choice tidbits, but there's plenty to go around. Thank you. 
Mangala Jodi's marshes are an endless source of fascination for those with the inclination to watch quietly. Chilica's rich bird life, scenic beauty, and vast expanse may present an image of an idyllic paradise. But the lake's problems cannot be ignored. The opening of a new sea mouth may have given dying Chilica a new lease of life. But much more needs to be done to safeguard its future. One of the most worrying problems is the unsustainable level of fishing. Once, people fished mainly for local consumption. But today, seafood from Chilika is exported all over India, and even to other countries. In the pursuit of profit, people catch everything. They fish all year round and don't spare even the breeders or the juveniles. While this indiscriminate exploitation is senseless, what's suicidal is the blocking of vital migratory channels. 86% of the fish species in Chilica need to migrate between the lake and the sea at some stage in their life. Studies have shown that this narrow canal at the southern end of the lake is one of the most important migratory routes. Sadly, illegal nets across this crucial corridor trap virtually every fish that passes through. If the fish using the canal were allowed to migrate to the sea and return freely, fish stocks in Chilica could go up many, many times, benefiting everyone. Illegal prawn cultivation is another major problem, with vast areas of Chilica cordoned off for the profits of a few. These enclosures exclude both local fisherfolk and dolphins from some of the most productive areas of the lake. With many human pressures growing every day, there is a real danger of drastic resource depletion, which will affect both humans and wildlife. Fortunately, Chilica's few problems can all be solved. Many local communities now realize the need for wise use of natural resources and have shown a willingness to cooperate with the Chilica Development Authority's efforts towards the lake's sustainable management. But Chilica should not be seen merely as a source of livelihood for humans. Its biological diversity is a priceless treasure that must be preserved. Managed with care, this vibrant lake can provide a secure future, both for its people and its wildlife. <laughs>